Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and enjoyed it, hit the like button, the subscribe button, bell notification button. As always, I have plans for what I want to read in the month of May. I completed my whole TBR in April, despite the fact that I was a conference somehow. Um, so I'm being stupidly overly ambitious because I am taking a couple days off in May because there I have uh, my birthday and a couple extra days mixed in there. And there's a long weekend in Canada. So, and I also don't have another job on the weekends, which is like, huzzah, awesome. So I have big plans. There's absolutely zero chance I'm going to get all of these books crammed in here, but I'd like to have a couple extra options choices when I get to like near the end of the month when I'm trying to figure out what I want to read. And there's quite a few arcs in here too. So those are ones that I know I'm not really going to be able to finish in a day for the most part. Those are going to take me, you know, two to three days for the, like, depending on the size, um, to finish them. And also the TBR and Beyond group is doing middle grade May. Um, we did that last year too. Um, so I wanted to make sure to include some middle grade books in here that have been maybe sitting on my shelf for a little while. Um, and there's a, an arc or two in here as well. So that's, that's that. And these are the books I'm going to attempt to get to in the month of May. Also really sorry if there's weird loud noise in the background. I have upstairs neighbors that are inexplicably loud at the randomest times of day for absolutely no reason. So I'm honestly not even 100% sure I want to read this book, but I also am 100% sure I want to read this book. You'll understand when I tell you who this is. Um, but Deviate by J. Kristoff. This is the sequel to Life Like, Life Like tore my freaking heart out as J. Kristoff's books do, and I picked up the arc for the sequel. It comes out at the end of June, so if I don't get to it in May, I'm going to push it to my June TBR, and honestly, I might just end up doing that anyways, because his books always hurt, and so, like, the smaller the gap I can put between books, the better, so, yeah. I also really, really hope, not even, like, planning on, I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll be disappointed if I don't get to this one. This is going to be high on the TBR. I picked up Wicked Fox by Cat Cho and Ark at my conference. I lunged at this when I saw it. Oh, my God, I was aggressive. Um, that's just me. Um, it's a it's a contemporary fantasy uh, set in Seoul. And, like, if you know me, hi, my name is Sam. I'm kind of obsessed with BTS right now. Like, just, like, just a little low-key. Um, hashtag soap for life. It is a duology. There, it was originally titled, like, Gimiho, which I kind of wish they had stuck with something a little bit more, like, Korean-y sounding. Um, but Wicked Fox, I'm hearing nothing but amazing things about it. It comes out in June. It doesn't specify which date on the arc. But I am really excited. It's something I've been noticing, actually, when I get arcs now that they're including, whether it's going to be available on audiobook um, on the arc, which I find really helpful, I, especially with anything that is not in the West, like, geographically set in the West or with Western cultures. I like knowing how to pronounce things, or at least, like, hearing how it's supposed to be pronounced. Sometimes, like, Wicked Saints, I still, for the life of me, can listen to the audiobook and not pronounce the names. But uh, it is going to be available on audiobook from Listening Library. So I'm really, really excited about that to know. And I'm dying for this cover, like, the design, like, the drawing theme. And, yeah, so her life is in his hands. Her heart is, his heart is in hers. 100 days to choose who lives, like, Oh, I'm so excited for this. An addictive fantasy romance set in modern day Seoul. I'm really, really hoping to get to Light Years by Cass Morgan. She's the author who wrote The 100. I have never read the books or seen the TV show. I've heard really like good things about the TV show, not in terms of an adaptation. I haven't heard anything about that, but people seem to really enjoy the TV show. So maybe I'll get into that. But this is sci-fi. The other one is a dystopian. Um, but this is um, f reeling from a devastating attack by a mysterious enemy. The Quatrefleet Academy is opening its doors to a new class of cadet from every planet in the solar system. Like that just sounds like a dynamic for absolute chaos. And I'm going to assume it's going to deal with discrimination based off of that summary too. So I'm really excited for this. And yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really curious about this. And if I like this, maybe I will go back and attempt the 100. I tried, I think once and just didn't, I was out of my dystopian kind of thing. So yeah. My nonfiction for the month is going to be The Art of Poisoning by Eleanor Herman. This book just randomly suddenly showed up in my audible recommendations and I saw it and was like, that sounds amazing. I know she's an author of a fiction series, and I think Ella, uh, I, I think I have the audiobook of the first book of that series. I have no idea what it's called. Just Google Eleanor Herman. It, it sounds awesome, but it's all about, like, it's a nonfiction, obviously, about monarchies and the, the use of poisons to, you know, change 
change monarchies and lineage lines and all of that chaos. I find poisoning so interesting because there's just so many different like degrees and the science required in it and the ability to hide it but then also being like but I kind of hope they figure it out like it's like watching Murdoch mysteries and you're like how the heck did they ever solve crimes before like any DNA evidence or like any videos like if you just left the block that you robbed the bank of you're like basically free like <laughs> So I'm really curious about this one. I also really, really, really want to make sure I read The Impossible, or sorry, The Train to Impossible Places by O.P. P.G. Bell. This is a middle grade. It's so freaking cute. And it's got like in the back. All I know is that there's a main character. She's in like her living room or something like that. And then all of a sudden a train comes in and then there's like ghost pirates and all this weird sounding stuff. Uh, the train travels through the impossible places. A boy trapped in a snow globe, a girl who's about to go on the adventure of a lifetime. And the few people I know who have read it have really, really enjoyed it. They liked it. So I'm really hopeful about this. And I just love this cover so much. It's so cute. Um, so yeah. Unless you're new to this channel, you'll not be surprised to see these books here. But there was a vote in TBR and Beyond for middle grade books that we should read. And I'm not disappointed in the results that there were. Honestly, all the books I kind of really wanted to read them, so it worked out. But we are going to be reading Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow, and A Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is book one and book two in the Nevermore series. Book three is being written. I need it desperately, desperately. Um, and it's been like, what, three, four months since I've read these? So why not? But I just, I love these series. And then I saw the paperback got released of the UK editions. And it's like a slightly different cover. And like, high key, I'm kind of debating buying it. So I don't know what to do with myself at this point. Anyways, um, yeah. I also just thought it was appropriate because I'm getting my tattoo this week. My second tattoo. And it is never more related. So I just thought this was, you know, appropriate. I'm not 100% sure I'm saying this word right. Uh, I should figure it out because I've seen it in two book titles now. But Sion of the Fox or Sion of the Fox by S.M. Bieko. Uh, I, this, the author has been at like two conferences I've been at now. And I, the second time I went and, and got her a copy of the second book signed. It's up there. But I actually don't own the first copy. So I was like, if I own the second copy signed, maybe I should read the first one. And the author's name is actually Samantha. So I was like, hmm, well, maybe I should like read it. So <laughs> I am going to be reading Sion of the Fox this month by Sambieco. I honestly can't for the life of me remember anything of the summary. I'm just going to assume it's to do with like mysticism or mythology of some sort um, and animals based on the covers I'm seeing and the just general tone of them. And, and I didn't read the author. She seemed really nice. So gonna give it a go. I'm also insanely eager to read Let's Call It a Doomsday by Katie Henry. I literally waited to put this book in my birthday month because Katie Henry is a treasure. I treasure her immensely since Heretics Anonymous. And then she came and did an author chat in the TBR and Beyond group. And she's is confusingly more funny than I thought she would be after reading Heretics Anonymous. And this whole like potentially like getting ready for Doomsday while having like conflicting personality character traits sounds immensely interesting and she has a book coming out in 2021 I believe it is I can't believe we're planning things for 2021 now like that doesn't seem right that seems far far away I'm also trying to convince her to write a book about Stephen the sixth I'm actually going to murder someone upstairs I really hope she writes a book about I think it's Pope Stephen the sixth or the fifth I can't remember the number but he dug up a dead body and put it on trial as the Pope so there's, there's comedy in that there. Like, this, that's a Katie Henry book. So, in the off chance she watches this, I'm not giving up on that Pope Stephen book or on an author giving me a book set in Atlantis. It's one or the other, and I'm not going to stop. So, yeah. But I am going, I will slap someone if I don't get to this book this month. I actually think I'm just going to, like, wait and start it on my birthday. And that, that'll be my gift, one of my gifts to myself. I'm also nervous, but I am going to attempt Every Heart is a Dore by Shannon McGuire. This was pushed on me quite a few times by a variety of people, but my friend Melanie specifically absolutely loves this series. I'm hesitant because it is so loved that I'm like, mm, people were like that about The Cruel Prince, and I was very meh about The Cruel Prince. It's the novellas of this, like, I think there's five books now, um, or four books going to be five books, are their novellas. They, however, are like $40 in Canada, and they're less than 200 pages. That is astronomically overpriced, and I'm like, I eat. Okay, so I've decided to go through the library because I am not paying that much to 
to a try it at author stuff for the first time, but for a novella as well. So um, I hope I like it. I've heard either people love it or hate it. I'm also curious because it is getting adapted. It was purchased um, for TV rights, I believe, last I saw. So I'm really curious about this, and people seem really passionate about it. So if I probably don't say anything about it, it means I didn't like it. <laughs> I also plan on getting to White Rose this month by Kip Wilson. This was an arc I got in... January, I want to say, at the, yes, in January, um, at the Ontario Library Conference. It'll be my first book I've ever read in verse. So I'm nervous about that. But like last time I like tried a new format, it was either like Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, which I loved, and Illuminate by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, which loved. So I'm also just really curious. White Rose, if you don't know, is um, about Hans and Sophie Scholl. Um, they were people in 42, 43, I was gonna say 42, who were Aryan Germans, um, well, I should say, they were white Germans, I believe they had brown hair, but, um, Germans benefiting from the country, um, this, the social status that was being created by the Nazis, and however, they used a printing press, went to their university and threw up a bunch of flyers condemning Nazism, telling people what they're doing in concentration camps, all that. And I've seen an older documentary movie about it, and then I was lucky enough in 2016, no, 2014, I want to say, between second and third year, to get to go to Berlin for two weeks for school. Um, and we got to see the little memorial pole thing. It's probably about my height with them. And they're just sort of forgotten in history. There's a lot of voices, and rightfully so, we get a lot of, like, people who survived the Holocaust voices. But it is really interesting to hear all the people who were being privileged to the institution and fighting back. So I'm really, really, really curious about this, and I hope I loved it, because they fascinate me Im immensely. Um, and on a slightly dark note, they were arrested and guillotined um, within, like, I think two days or something like that. So it, they're just, I'm, I'm amazed that they've, they're remembered in history with such a quick process. So I am just really, really, really excited about this. Um, and I hope it's really good. I also really hope to get to Breadcrumbs by On Ursu this month. Um, I haven't read anything else. I, heard, I freaking love this cover. It's adorable. It is supposed to be in Hansel and Gretel retelling, if I remember correctly. Um, it, sorry, Hazel and Jack were best friends. Yes, yeah, so Hansel and Gretel retelling. Um, I just the cover. I freaking love. It's a girl of color and there's like wolves. Um, it just looks awesome. Um, so I really, really hope I love it. And I haven't really heard anyone say anything about it. And I just kind of got reminded of it. Uh, the author has a book coming out soon or it just came out. So I'm really curious about this and it's a middle grade. So it fits TBR and Beyond Challenge this month. I also hope to get to Game of Stars by Sayat Sayatani Dasgupta. I'm sorry if I'm still not saying that right. I am trying. I just haven't found anywhere here properly. Um, but this is book two to a, a, a Serpent's Secret or a secret. Yeah, A Serpent's Secret. I also just, again, got just it's a middle grade and I got reminded of it because book three's cover was revealed this month I also plan on trying to finish off my Elise Kova wrap up because they she in Danielle Jensen are doing a author event in Calgary on May 8th and Calgary is about eight hours from me I am taking days off work to drive down to Calgary because driving is cheaper than flying somehow um and gonna go to that event so I want to be all caught up and then hopefully I can pick up the book one and two of her spinoff series while she's there. I hope she has copies. So that is the plan. So I'm going to try and read Earth's End by Lise Kova, Water's Wrath by Lise Kova, and Crystal Crowned by Lise Kova. And then I will be caught up for the most part, just her new spinoff series. I'm hesitant to read Crystal Crown because I know a bunch of people didn't particularly love it. Um, but, uh, you know, there are a variety of authors that struggle with endings, so that doesn't necessarily surprise me. Plus, there are books where people say that, and then I read the ending. I'm like, but that makes sense. Like, you weren't going to get a Romeo, and, you weren't going to get, a, a, like, a Disney Romeo and Juliet. You were going to get an actual William Shakespeare Romeo and Juliet ending sort of stuff. So I'm curious and hopeful and nervous. Um, and maybe I'll read these, listen, like, on the audiobooks while I'm driving. to the. I'll have eight hours each way to drive. Um, so lots of time. <laughs> um, maybe that's what I'll do. I don't I plan on finishing, I'm amazed, the very last book that I have in the Sherlock Holmes anthology here. And the last one is, oops, The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes. Um, I hope this finish is strong. I didn't love the last story, um, but there are some in here that I really enjoyed. And this is a little bit longer one. Um, so I'm really curious about this. And then after that, I'll be done. And then I'll get back on my Outlander train and finish up that series. And yeah, it's taken me 
like a year and a half, but I did it. I did it. I'm really proud of myself. This thing is like uh, 1,100 pages, like, and they're like Bible pages. Um, yeah. So this book actually came out in April. Um, I picked up an arc of it at my conference called Lenny's Book of Everything by Karen Fox Lee. Um, I should also specify it came out by this publisher, uh, Knopf. Yeah, not in April, but it was released in 2018 under a different publisher, under a different cover. But this just sounds really cute. I believe it's set in the 70s or 80s. And it's supposed to deal with a lot of like mental health and physical health um, topics. Um, but the main character, Lenny, she's the sister and her brother. It has this like almost sounds like um, not, not dwarfism, like the opposite version. Like he's abnormally large, like his genes, like everything's growing. Um, so he's like dramatically bigger. And the family is definitely low, um, low income. And her mother, however, enters a, like, I don't know, like a contest and wins. And the prize is like a set of encyclopedias. Remembering this is this time period, you didn't have the internet. So every week or month, I believe it is, that they get a, a volume of it delivered. So it's the book of everything is the encyclopedia. I'm really curious about this. This sounds so cute. And I, the covers, the front and the back just look really, really cute. And they remind me a little bit of... Um, the Neil Patrick Harris series. Uh, why am I told totally, the magic misfits? So I'm really, really curious about this and it's a middle grade. So it fits in with again, TBR beyond challenge. I, I think they did this again because it's my birthday. One of my all time favorite movies is going postal. Um, I, for the life of me, can't explain it. It's one of the weirdest movies. However, I have this obsession with Neil Patrick and Terry, uh, sorry, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I'm also kind of thinking because Good Omens premieres later this month, which that book is messed up, and I loved it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about Terry Pratchett now and the whole Discworld series, so I'm going to read Going Postal. It has been forever since I've read this. Like, can't remember a thing about it or the differences between the books and the movies. I'm probably going to watch the movie afterwards, too. Um, I love hearing Moist von Lichtenstein's. Um, I think that's how you say it. Uh, von Lipwig, sorry, not Lipwig, Moist von Lipwig's name, just, it's the, it's a Terry Pratchett Neil Gaiman thing, um, but it's about the post office <laughs> and the importance of it to society. It reminds me of a, a lecture we had in, in grad school about does, um, does a postal system going under reflect the society going under? It was this weird thing, but I just have a lot of thinking attached to it. And I remember actually watching the TV show when it aired, I think on BBC, like 10 years ago. I remember sitting down that night with my mom watching it. So it was just lots of memories attached to this. And I'm really, really excited to read it. It's been forever. I'm really excited to pick up The Tiger at Midnight by Swati Tirdala. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. It is a Hindu mythology book. It is an Asian debut this year as well. Like it's just one of the, the awesome amount of them. She's going to be in the TBR and Beyond group in the month of May too, doing a visit. And we're going to be doing a discussion like group event about this. Kill the general, evade his soldiers, find the assassin, save the country, don't fall in love. If that doesn't sound like a YA, like done perfectly if there's a lineage and reveal in here i might lose my mind like legitimately lose my mind so um i'm just i'm oh, excited is like an understatement the cover is also freaking gorgeous in person like you don't even understand this is all foiled and like this is like not foiled but reflective and then the spine is foiled and it's like yellow to like orange like the sun kind of and then like this is like a gold and like a yellow foil seriously it's freaking beautiful and then like all the page chapters have like this studded thing oh it's huh, i really wish they would have done something underneath it because it would have like easily have been one of the prettiest books like period and the story i've seen this year but that means i'm so excited about this i haven't really heard anything about it to be totally honest i don't know many people who read arcs of it or, or anything so i'm really excited about this i'm really excited just coming to the to the tbr beyond group i know it's the first book and what is set to be a trilogy and asian debut it's the years of asian debut i've said this a million times and i love getting more women of color and more mythology voices and i am really excited too because this has an audiobook out so i will hopefully be able to hear how to pronounce things properly I'm also going to read The King of Atolia this month, hopefully, by Megan Whalen-Turner. This is another one that if I'm running at the end of the month and I don't have enough time to finish all the books, I'll drop this and bump this to next month because the next, or no, not this, this is book three, then there's book four, but then book five is not coming out till like late 2020. They pushed back their, uh, okay, I've talked about this before. I just, I hate that. Um, but I'm just curious because of how everything ended with the Queen of Atolia and this whole weird 
dynamic and the romance stuff. It's all confusing and I'm here for it. I am freaking insanely excited. Um, in May, TBR and Beyond Group, we are also having Joanne He come to a visit. She released Descendant of the Crane, which like if you haven't picked up a copy, like do yourself a favor and pick one up. It's insanely pretty in person. Like it's, it looks like a lot of neutral shades, like when you're like looking on the computer, but like in person, it's like, it's so aesthetically pleasing. Like I, I kind of have goosebumps right now, actually, while I'm talking about this. So like, yes, high key obsessed. I also need people to buy this because I need better say like the most amazing sales. I shouldn't say better. I don't even know how well this is sold. I need the most amazing sales because I need a freaking sequel to this book. Okay. With how the arc ended, I will not be okay if this is a standalone or remains a standalone. Um, I also would like it to do well because I really wish they would do an audiobook and hopefully buy the audiobook rights for that because once again... Asian names, I would love to know how to pronounce them properly. That is just, ugh. and it's like this monarchy. Uh, it's not, a, yeah, it's a monarchy, but it's not like a patriarchy monarchy. And like she takes over from her father, and like there's this whole god situation, and like it's weird. It's an amazingly impressive, strong debut. It's like I was floored when I was reading this, and the whole like atmosphere in the world, it was just, oh, I'm just here for it. And I'm excited beyond belief that she's going to be in the TBR and Beyond group. Buy the book for Pete's sakes, people. I don't know how many more times I have to say that. I'm very eagerly going to pick up Lady Smoke by Laura Sebastian, book two in the Ash Princess series. Um, or I don't know if that's what the series is called anymore, but it's book two. Book one was Ash Princess. And it's, oh, it's so pretty in person. Oh my God. But like things went down at the end of Ash Princess. That's all I can really say without spoiling it. And I don't even think I could summarize this book without high key spoiling parts of Ash Princess. So just, yeah really excited for it. And lastly, I plan on, I, I, I'd be surprised, honestly, if I didn't get to this one, Ice, The Ice Monster by David Walliams. I didn't realize David Walliams was an author and an insanely, insanely profitable and popular author at that. I, li I like, i not a Scooby-Doo clue. I don't know how I missed that. I know him as the weird, flamboyant, outrageous comedian on panel shows, but yeah, He's, a, he's an author, too. I picked up Ice Wolves because the cover is freaking adorable. And London, 1899, this is the story of a 10-year-old orphan and a 10,000-year-old mammoth. And I was like, cool. That was the easiest sell of all time. Um, and it's just got these really cute, like, illustrations. Very Raw Doll-esque, for sure. Um, and I'm just curious if I like him, then I have all these other middle-grade children's books that I can can try and get into as well. So those are all the books I hope to read in the month of May. If this has had a lot of background noise, I absolutely apologize. I am frantically filming after work on a Monday whilst I have a little bit of sunlight left. And this is when my neighbors, who are thankfully, I think, moving out, decided to start vacuum cleaning. And, you know, at all other times, they would probably do it at 3 a.m. on a Monday morning just to wake me up. But they decided to do it now. Um, so if that is the case, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Anyways, that is the end of my rambling. I will link all of these books in the description down below. Make sure to go down there, check it out, and also go look there. I have all of my social media links. If you follow me, I will follow you back.